it's pretty low. It's pretty, and it's dark. It's scary. Everything you see, you're like, ooh, is that a shark? What's up, scuba friends, and welcome back to Dive Vibe. I'm Zach, and I'm a technical rebreather instructor. I've been teaching diving for over a decade, and today I'm going to be reacting to one of Jake's videos from D Almighty. This isn't the first time we've watched one of Jake's videos together, but this one looks super interesting, so let's check it out. You can find the link to the original video in the description below. Oh, Yeah, another puppy. Yes, that's right. I'm just puppy sitting this one, though. This one, this one isn't mine. Internet, say hi to Hoku. Yep. <sighs> okay, let's get started. So this time, Jake is looking for Megalodon shark teeth, which is pretty cool. I think there's a, there's a lot of different places you can do that. I know the St. Lawrence River, they do the shark teeth hunting, and there, there's other places. I know Dive Talk just did a video about it, which is pretty cool. I gotta get, I gotta do this one of these days. Kind of neat. The only sh shark teeth we find around here, around here are tiger shark teeth, which is cool, but they're like crazy rare. I know a couple people who have found them. Uh, but anyway, they're in South Carolina. And it looks weird, but they said there's sharks in there, so. But it's really murky water. It honestly looks like a freshwater lake. So let's see. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what's going on. This is different than any other shark tooth adventure that we've ever gone on because this is black water. So guys, Jake here. It's Today we're in water. South Carolina and we're going scuba diving for giant rare megalodon shark teeth with my We've got a different type of black water out here in Kona. Check out the black water night dive. It's freaking cool. My friends Tristan and Brandon. I actually have a video about that. I'll put it up there. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. All right. If you enjoy scuba diving for shark teeth videos, drop a thumbs up. Maybe we'll all team back up to see what else we can find. To be honest, there's really not that much to worry about. Besides the fact that we have zero okay. clarity, we got to... There's not that much to worry about. Look at this, though. They all have, like, similar wetsuits, and they have these hide vests. I know I said it the last time I reacted to this, but they they look cool. These guys really got a, got a theme going, and I'm here for it. Besides the fact that we have zero clarity, we got to depend on this screwdriver. To Yo! Is that the Husky Dive Shank? This video brought to you by the Husky Dive Shank. All right. It's enough of that. This is not an actual scuba tool. This is just, I happen to have the same screwdriver as them. I thought it was funny. They were live. We're not going to know what <laughs> way we're going because we won't really have visibility with our watches. We got three people, buddy system, but we don't know where each other are. <laughs> other than that, besides the alligator sharks and uh, the fact that alligator sharks, clay balls and weed balls that come at you out of nowhere, I think it's giant clay balls and weed balls coming at you. What are they diving in? It'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> might need a little more slack. Yeah, a little bit of slack. All right, so let's check out the gear. Okay, let's see what they got so far. All right, so that's, um, I wanted to call it an Aqualung Zuma, but I'm betting, is that a Rogue? I need to pause it real quick. Got to figure this out. It looks like a Zuma or a Rogue or an Outlaw or something like that. It's Aqualung BCD. It's like a Zegel regulator. And these big blue lights, man, these big blue lights are the truth. We use them for the mana dive, and they are super powerful. Um, cr last a while, crazy bright. That's a, That is serious overkill for what they're doing because in that water that's actually um a floodlight so it it's not the best light for this type of diving you really want something with a tight beam that can punch through that murky water uh so this is not the rest thing but I mean, it's gonna be fine it's not gonna be a problem no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'll be right there go for it oh god this is, this is so messed up he's scared <laughs> Should be. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> oh my God! Look at that water movement. <clears throat> Good thing they've got a line in the water. <laughs> Look right behind him. The water is moving so much. See, you can see the water like around that line. <laughs> The water, there's some water movement for sure. Oh, I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you guys. When I hopped in this water, I was really nervous. Brandon was nervous as well, and we had to drop down 50 feet in 41 degree Fahrenheit water. 41 the water degrees. Is freezing cold. No, it's not. That's not freezing. But it's freezing. I get what he's saying. So diving in water like this is is super disorienting. I remember the first dive that I went on in really low visibility. I think the visibility was probably. 
less than 10 feet or something like that, which is pretty... It's, it's pretty low. It's pretty... And it's dark. It's scary. Everything you see, you're like, the shark? This is... Um, yeah. It's definitely uh, uh, testing conditions. You get used to it after a while. I did tons of lake diving when I was back in Texas. And I've been... I've done dives where visibility was less than a foot. At that point, it's like, why are you even diving? You kind of, you've seen it with better visibility, so you get to a certain spot. You're like, oh, I know what this is. You got to kind of look at stuff to figure out what it is. Look a little closer. All right, so they're down there. They got to descend. You say 40 feet, 60 feet. Okay, so they hit the bottom. <laughs> but when we finally hit the bottom of the river, I noticed that we were a little shallow and that we had to go left a little ways to drop off the 50 feet. Oh my God. Deep. Brandon didn't like being on the left, but it was... My dive buddy back in Texas and I used to dive in Lake Travis, and this was, this was that's just close. Uh, this You got to stay so close to keep track of your buddy. We actually, uh, the last dive we did there uh, for fun, we held on to each other the whole time. I grabbed the shoulder strap on his side mount harness and on the whole boat, we were the only ones that managed to stay together for the entire dive. <laughs> Everybody else also surfaced five minutes into the dive and we, uh, managed to knock out a whole half hour. It was cold and it was boring. Then we went and did some treasure hunting and that was fun was safer being on the right, so I was not switching with him. <laughs> so I'm using these screwdrivers to help hold position while we're searching for shark teeth. The current is so strong, if we didn't have these, it would actually lift us up off the ground and then just take us Look down at those the river. Bubbles. So Jesus. these are the only things keeping us in position while Brandon and I are searching for those big megalodon this shark is, teeth. This is actually hairy. <laughs> like, lesser divers would really have a problem with this. These guys... Um, Definitely are comfortable underwater and able to remain calm, which is great. Okay. Wow. That's how close you gotta get to see. Just laughing. This is a... <laughs> it's a reflex that I developed uh, when I was deployed. Whenever something bad happens to you, you just laugh. It's like, oh my god, this sucks. And you just laugh at it. It makes everything feel not quite so bad. So I just found the gravel layer right here. I was telling Brandon, Ooh. I'm like, this is good, this is good. And what you're searching for is like a bunch of little rocks amongst the clay, and that's where you're gonna find some heavy bone. Just like the first find of the day, and that's a whale bone. And uh, we're still looking for that first shark tooth, but maybe we'll find it here in a second. Oh, no. that's cool. hey. that's What's pretty crazy is if one of us finds an eight inch megalodon shark tooth, it would break a world record, and someone is willing to pay $1 million for that shark tooth. So we're the all million brave dollars? And in the scary deep waters in search of this big megalodon that's shark tooth. That's why they're dumb. One of us gets lucky enough, we're gonna buy Lamborghinis for everyone. It's gonna be pretty awesome and pretty funny if we actually end up doing it. And I always say, you know, you can't win the lottery if you don't play. So we just gotta get out there, put our lives on the line in the scary water, and maybe we'll get lucky. All right, he is a treasure hunter, so that makes sense. Oh, he got one. Damn, that's big. It's actually really cool. I never really thought of this, thought much of this shark tooth diving, but. That's pretty cool. That's a big one. <laughs> wow, they are excited. Thank you, man. They look cold. So worth it? 41, 41 degrees. Wait, what? This is the water's 41 degrees. There's no way I'd be touching that water with a wetsuit. That's dry suit temperature all the way. All right, let's see what they got. Okay. Did you guys see that? <laughs> right there. Right, right here above his head. I'm sure that he's doing it on purpose. But it looks to me like Jake has set his tank up backwards. 
there's this guy does a lot of diving. There's just no way that that's an accident. It looks like his reg is set up that way. Maybe it's not his gear. You know what? I'm just going to leave that one alone. Okay. I guess, I mean, if you wanted to, wouldn't hurt anything. Okay. <laughs> Yo! It was so cool. Oh, it's that was cool, cool man. Oh. We did it. <laughs> so Brandon and I just got done with our first dive. I'm going to go back down there, but Brandon's going to give his scuba gear to Tristan so we can dive one Brandon's more time cold. as a group. T's got to experience it, man. Brandon's yeah, the smart one. scary, but he got super lucky and found something really good other than shark teeth. I'm going to show you my best finds from that dive here in a second, but let me show you what Brandon found. All right, so when we're down there, we're looking for triangles. That's the deal. Shark teeth are triangular. Yep. I see this one, and it kind of looks like a little shark tooth. And then I realize what it is. And yeah. they had kind of mentioned it on the ride in, but I didn't expect to see it. So find it. I actually found a spear point. Oh, wow. That's over 10,000 years old, potentially. So, yeah, is that different from an arrowhead? That, man. That's very really cool. cool. Very, spear very point? cool. Is that man. different from an arrowhead? So, it's cool to find shark's teeth and all those. Let me know in the uh, comments if you know. Bones of now, keep in mind, Tristan and I, we're going to get back down there for the second <laughs> go. So, this is what I found so far. Brandon found some good shark teeth. Got really lucky with the arrowhead. Over here, are some of the cool teeth I found. I'd say the biggest one is this one right here. Dude. That would probably oh, be my that's personal cool. best, but it is it's broken. Huge. So, it's a little bit of a heartbreaker. But no matter what, it's a piece of history and that's still really cool. I'd say my best find of the day so far is this shark tooth. It's pretty good, it's all intact. But, um, oh my god, look at his hands shaking. It's cold. So bad, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to warm up a little bit the best I can and get ready for Tristan and I's dive. But so far, man, we had a great and, day. And it's impossible to warm up still in your wetsuit unless you're like pouring hot water in there or something. You have to take your wetsuit off to warm up in conditions like this. The wind blowing through, it's just going to make you colder having that wet wetsuit on you. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> How bright that light is. <laughs> So I'm dropping down 50 feet right now with Tristan and I can't really explain the feeling other than just complete vulnerability. Like I just feel like something can that's come exact, and get us. That's exactly right. When you're descending in water and you can't see the bottom, especially when you're not used to it or you don't know where you're going, you just feel incredibly vulnerable. There's <laughs> there's that's the best way to describe it that I've ever heard. Like you you don't you're like, "Oh, you're probably going to be fine, but like not like looking down and not being able to see your legs when you're at the surface you're just like it immediately gives you this mental image of like something swimming around ready to just I definitely know this feeling of just feeling like you're crawling along the bottom because if you look away you'll lose the bottom <laughs> yeah. I'm honestly surprised that they haven't lost each other yet Oh, they lost each other. Called it. Oh, not the quacker. Years of being a dive guide has made me hate the quacker. It's like nails on a chalkboard. That's better. Yeah, tink, tink, tink. Tink, 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 they... They know it. They know what's up. They found each other. By an echolocation. Okay. You can't really tell which direction sound is coming from underwater, but if the sound is getting louder, then you know you're getting closer to the source. Ooh, that's sheer water though. Ooh. Got a fast descent. <laughs> yeah, so his, his dive computer was just giving him an alarm for a fast descent, so I think they probably uh, maybe skipped the safety stop. <laughs> Uh, it's hard when you don't have any orientation. When you have no orientation like that, you really need to be glued to your to your dive computer to make sure that you're not ascending too fast. Because that is dangerous. You don't want to ascend too fast. You risk decompression illness. Just don't do it. All right.
<laughs> All right, another successful one. They're up. Diving, They're stoked. And Tristan and I one thing, so much fun. We've one thing that I forgot to mention the last time is that they have all this current, and they crawled using their uh, their screwdrivers or whatever towards the uh, ahead of the boat. Right? They went ahead of the boat, down current, up current rather, so that they could at the end just drift back to the boat because you don't want to start a dive going with the current because then when you're tired it makes it even harder to get back to the boat you always want to start the dive going into the current not with the current that's some great stuff we lost each other for a moment but we found each other later on sure did but these are our finds of no the problem, final though. dive of the day check them out the oh. procedure by the way if you lose your buddy is to look around for one minute and then ascend uh, it looked like that they were down, they were lost for less than a minute, so no big deal. Oh, freaking monster! Got some beast. Ones here. So obviously these are a little broken, but and they're called heartbreakers. But these are some of the biggest teeth I've ever found in my life. I'm gonna be giving away all the shark teeth I find. Oh, in this what video. a good guy! All you gotta do if you want to enter to win one what is a leave a guy. like on this video. All right, he's giving away the shark teeth. That's nice. So shark tooth dive seemed pretty successful. Um, what went wrong? What went well? They kept together for the most part, at least on the first dive. Second dive, they lost each other for a little bit, but then they found each other. Didn't seem like they looked around for more than a minute. It seemed like real quick. So that's good. Yeah. And then... I don't, I don't know about the environment here. I don't know how good it is to be uh, shoving screwdrivers in the ground. They didn't seem like they messed too much stuff up, but I don't know. This isn't my, this isn't my home turf. I can't really uh, comment on that uh what went uh what went well also they did the dive into the current so when they surfaced they could easily make it back to the boat and nobody had any accidents which is great and they had the the, the husky dive shank to keep them safe which is excellent what went bad jake's tank was backwards what the hell, what the hell was that jake i'm just kidding i'm sure he had a reason for doing it Maybe it was maybe it was a quick fix because his computer wasn't reading his transmitter properly. He's like, let me flip it around real quick so I can get the transmitter on this. I don't know. That's probably not it. <laughs> I just, there, there's got to be a reason because kind of kind of a silly thing to do. Oh well. Definitely not the first person I've seen do that, and it didn't hurt anybody, so I'm not all that worried about it. Uh, but anyway. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed that video. And subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff, not just reaction videos, but educational stuff, funny stuff, whatever you like. If you want to support the channel, Patreon's a good place to do that. Or you could go over to my Bonfire merch store and buy one of these shirts. When we get a new shirt coming out in the nearish future, I don't know. I'm, it's still being drawn, so I don't really have a timeline on it. Thanks for diving with me today and I'll see you in the water.